Wayne, it is year 29, week one of PFR on Lakeshore Public Television. Unbelievable. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> it really is. Uh, and you know, Joe, this is the time of the year. Summer's starting to end. You know, oh, don't say that. My golf game there's, is getting there's, worse. <laughs> there's still a lot of golf to be played. <laughs> but yet, it is football season. Yes, it is. Boy, that's a good thing. We preview week one of the high school football season coming up next on Lakeshore Public Television. Program support comes from NIPSCO. Honey, who is this guy? Oh, that's Frank. Hey, Frank. <laughs> Honey, why is Frank in our bedroom? He's showing us ways to save money. Plus, he'll even help us install LED bulbs and new shower heads. Oh, well, he is leaving before I shower, though, right? To schedule an energy assessment and learn more about energy usage, visit NIPSCO.com. Frank, could you hand me a towel? For more information on everything prep football, visit us on Facebook or on Twitter at PFR Sports. Back on PFR as we get ready for the high school football season tomorrow night and PFR scoreboard live tomorrow night at 10:30. And uh, Wayne, obviously, a big expectations for a lot of teams for every team going into the season tomorrow night. But who are some of the teams that are you're really interested in seeing kick it off and see how they uh, do tomorrow night? Well, you know, uh, as you look at the season and uh, you look at our area, you're always looking at you know the Merrivilles and the Laports and stuff like that. But I'm really interested to see how a North Newton mm. does this year. You know, they were 8-3 and three last right. year, a tremendous year. Right. Jeff Bean did an outstanding job last year with them. And it's harder for a small school to You're maintain right. that. You're right. That's a great, that's a great one. Uh, I am, too. I was looking at all the teams this week, and they were one that stuck out. Like uh, My first thought was, will they be able to back it up? You know, after last year, on the same wavelength with me is I'm really interested in Portage, yeah. because they were six and four, they won a lot of close games, but they lost a lot of close games. And one of the biggest advantages a high school football team could have is you have a veteran quarterback back, yeah. and they do, and they've got some other players back. Second year for Coach Rodriguez, obviously a big opener against Mishawaka. They lost by a touchdown last year to Mishawaka, but Portage is one of those teams that are they back you know um we're going to focus on a team here in, in that, that came back to life their program last year but is portage back to the extent where you know they can get close to winning the Doolin or making some noise in the postseason because with anthony maceo yes um you know, uh, they have a leg up on some of the competition who's got a quarterback coming back. And, you know, you've got a team in Michigan City. Exactly. With, you know, uh, yeah. Coach Mason over there. Right. Um, they've always had talent. But, boy, you know, yeah. it's been a long time since Bazia was there with them. And, they and their really, quarterback is back. Yeah, their quarterback well. is back. That's Another right. one of those teams here looking to see if they can back it up is Griffith. Their quarterback is back. And our T-Dub was out to see how the Panthers look for this season. Last year, the Griffith Panthers won eight games, which is four more than they did the year before. They also made it to a sectional final berth. And what's their reward for having such a great season? Well, now they move up from Class 3A to Class 4A, which is nothing new for our guest today, Griffith coach Ben Geffert, because we talked before we went on the air, and you said you've been there, done that, right? We've been there when I was a uh, Munster, we were 5A. Highland, we were 4A. First year we came, uh, I came into Griffith, we were uh, 4A and now 3A for three years and back up. So I've made the jump up and down and all around. So nice poetry, by the way. But now, that being said, what's the difference in being 4A as opposed to 3A as far as preparation is concerned? Uh, I think the biggest one there is the number, uh, three and four. 
as far as competition wise, there were some monsters in the 3A sectional and there were some monsters in the 4A sectional. So either one, I think we, uh, we had our work cut out for us. Now you mentioned about the playoffs. That's a good ways away. You mentioned that also before we went on the air. So you're not even thinking about that 3A, 4A thing, I would imagine, right? Now we have some uh, pretty tough opponents coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Chester coming in tomorrow, Michigan City, we're going over there week one. So I think our focus is biggest one is on our team. And the second one is that week one opponent, Michigan City. Now for people who aren't familiar with the jumping or demoting from classes, how does that work and how did you wind up in 4A? Uh, I think we wound up in 4A by around six students. So it was the number of students we have in our school and uh, those six that came in and happened to just bump us up a little bit. If you saw those six students right now, what would you say to them? Uh, welcome. <laughs> you know, I, 4A, 3A, it's, that's the beauty about uh, Indiana playoffs is everyone starts 0-0. So it's, it's a brand new season and uh, regardless if we're in 3A or 4A, we come to compete and win. Let's talk about the players on this team right now. Kadafi Coleman, a workout warrior, weight room warrior, and a pretty darn good football player comes back this year. Uh, a pretty darn good football player. Uh, like it's his work ethic you mentioned, but he's, he's a great leader and, uh, and he, he is a great role model for the young guys coming up and showing how we do things in the program. They did an article on him not too long ago about his bench press. Where is he pressing right now? Uh, I think he's around, he moved up. He's one of our first guys since I've been around to hit over 300, but I think the biggest impressive is he's, he's cleaning around 305, and so he'll, he'll break the school record, which I believe is 305. And Fred Winston, that quarterback, had a pretty good season for you last year. Let's talk about him. Now, Fred Winston has, I mean, stepped up tremendously in the leadership aspect, and he's, he's what we want in our quarterback. He leads the huddle. He leads people around. He holds everybody accountable, and I think, you know, talent-wise, he's always been there, but now he's, he's got that next gear and that, uh, that leadership. And whenever he's doing, everyone's watching, and, and that's what we wanted our quarterback. Let's go back last year. You lost two of your first three games. Then you turned things around and won seven of your next eight, made it to a sectional final. Point to a situation last year that turned this season around for you. Or uh, that season. They're, the tenacity we have in our kids. We had some outstanding leaders. Uh, Josh Miller, who we lost to a... Uh, to graduation but he was a guy that you know when when we were came in we were one two you know he, he made sure everyone was accountable still going still trucking forward knew what we wanted and, uh, and our goal after leaving that conference we knew our goal was to win that conference and I told the guys after the loss to Hobart that whoever wins this conference is gonna have one loss and you know it just happened to be us and Hobart so uh, I mean th that's that's credited to the coaches to put the, 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 the instill the confidence in them and the players to believe in each other and themselves Four wins in your first year. You double it last year to eight. What are your expectations this year? Uh, to continue to win. Right now, I think it's important for us to take it one practice, one game, one week at a time. Uh, we're not at that point where we can keep looking ahead to sectional playoffs. And uh, right now, we just we need to concentrate on today and tomorrow. Let's talk a little bit about what's new with Griffith this year. We know Coleman's here, Winston's here. What's new about this football team that can help you this upcoming season? Uh, guys you don't know, uh, Anthony Compton, who has been an outstanding, he had a breakout season last year at defensive end. He'll play a little more both sides of the ball, a fullback and uh, that defensive end spot. A, uh, a um, Savion Miles will come in at, at wide receiver. And we lost about all six, three of our three receivers, and they come back with a couple five, eight, five, nine guys. <laughs> so the type of routes they're running are a little different, but the way they run them, they're crisp, their hands are sure, and, and I'm excited about that group. Do you feel there's a bullseye on your back after last year because Griffith football is back? Now when you play them, you have to bring your A game. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we're no longer uh, sneaking up on anybody. You know, we kind of made our presence known of how we do things now and the, and the way we play, And but we like that target on our back. That's much better than reaching up and sneaking on people. I like coming face to face. Point will take it. Coach, thanks a lot for the time. We wish you well this season. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for coming out. Okay, Joe and Wayne, take it. Fred Winston, that returning quarterback, veteran, had an excellent season last excellent. year. I, I really think that the thing to watch tomorrow night is, to, is the schools with a veteran quarterback who's had some success, see if they have a little bit of a leg up. You look at Maryville getting Cameron right back healthy. Right. They should have a leg up offensively. Uh, you, you look at Portage we talked about, Mike McCullough at Michigan City. Well, you think of that Griffith and Michigan City game, you've got two excellent quarterbacks, yeah. both senior yeah. quarterbacks coming back. That's going to be a real uh, Michigan City's game. offense in the, in the yep. scrimmage sounded like it was running on, on all cylinders. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at uh, Valpo with Jake LaFue now. He's got a different story because 
Mr. Bazaki has gone, and yes. so is some yeah. of his uh, wide receiving right. core is gone. So they're going to have to develop some wide receivers uh, over there at Valpo with uh, Jake LaFue at quarterback. All right, we got a new segment tonight debuting on PFR. It is our mascot madness. We got some wacky nicknames for our high schools in Northwest Indiana, and we're going to delve into how exactly they got their nicknames. T-10, 9, 8, 7, 6. In the year 1959, the Soviet Union successfully launches Sputnik 1, the world's first artificial satellite, into space. Shortly after, the United States and the Soviet Union competed to be the first nation to make it to the next unknown frontier of modern society. The space race, as it is now known, took the world by storm. President Kennedy charges NASA with landing on the moon. The media turned towards science fiction with shows such as Star Trek, Lost in Space, and The Jetsons. Even the education system was affected by this competition, focusing on math, science, and technology. In 1965, South Central High School in Union Mills, Indiana, named its school mascot the Satellite after this historic time in the world. You know, it was a big popular time uh, in the United States. Uh, we wanted something new, we wanted something popular, and satellites really stuck. And uh, we really embrace how the community has come about uh, to be a satellite and how proud we are to be a satellite. We do have the Satellite Inn downtown, which is a big gathering place after games. They actually do offer a certain percentage after games of the bill that comes back to the uh, community to help the school. And uh, just really appreciate of everything that everybody's able to do whenever we're in a time of need or um, anything that we need to come together. It's usually centered around the school and we have a great support system of uh, you know little towns around us that are able to come together and support us as satellites and keep that satellites family strong. For more information on everything prep football, visit us on Facebook or on Twitter at PFR Sports. It's PFR Throwback Thursday. We're going to go back almost 10 years ago. In fact, it was 10 years ago yesterday. The Lowell Red Devils took on the Crown Point Bulldogs in 2007. Crown Point was coming off a couple of deep postseason runs. In fact, they were 18-0 in the regular season these past two years. But Lowell's defense was dominating, and so was their run game. Lowell won the opener back in August 16, 2007, 23-14. Handling, handing Crown Point their first regular season loss, Wayne. In well, I know. Years. I think I shot that one of them. Uh, that, no, video I... was, that video was way too good for you to have shot that, buddy. I'm starting to think that maybe I shot it. I, oh, okay. I don't know. All right. It is time for the only poll that really matters here, folks, on the eve of the high school football season. They're all tuning in tonight to see where they rank. Be a far top ten. Well, we'll start from the bottom, and I like Hobart at number 10. Uh, they had an excellent season. And again, Sectional champs? Yep, yeah. And, you know, again, a lot of this is predicated on what they did last year because, you, right. you know, they haven't right. opened up. But I do like uh, the way Coach Turley has uh, uh, had his program coming in the right direction. And Dran needs to bounce back a little bit under Coach Skinner, but they seem to have a real big one against Merrillville. Portage, I like. I yeah. like uh, Michelle. I, I think that uh, Michelle, uh, is Michelle. Michelle. Michelle, that's Anthony. it. I knew one of those things. Yep. Um, they got Mich some linemen back, too. Yeah, they do. Michigan City, outstanding. Uh, Valpo, I really don't want to see what they can do. You know, uh, they've always yeah. had a strong uh, line and stuff. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I think Valpo, obviously, opening with Penn is kind of a tough yes. barometer. Yes, it is. It'll be interesting to see how their offense fares tomorrow right. night. I really like Griffith. I think that they have a lot of quality players back, 
And uh, that Coleman is one heck of a player with Winston. I predict points tomorrow night. Oh, Griff I do Griffith too. and Michigan City. <laughs> oh, it is. Take, take some lotion for your neck. You might, you might get a sore <laughs> neck going back and forth. And it's at one of those great places to play yeah. football. What a great high school stadium there. Yeah. Yeah. Field. That's yeah. right. Uh, Crown Point, I think, is going to be a very strong team this year. Um, Sectional Boulder, champs. That's Bulldogs. right. Boulder is back, their quarterback. You talked about Merrillville and, yeah. and Wright being back, and uh, they got Streck inside still. And, right. Uh, uh, they've got a lot of talent. I, I think like, they got a Laramore too, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, maybe. I'm not sure about that. But uh, um, Lowell, uh, I think, that, you know, again, Lowell. Now, tomorrow night's game, I believe their quarterback is not playing the grass. But they still have plenty. They got just a bit. You got this Gill. Yeah, we saw seen. Jager Gill last year. Yes. He turns the quarter, forget about Woo. it. Ah, so they've stupid. got ball. They got playmakers on both sides of the ball. That's right. Now, obviously, not having your starting quarterbacks big, but um, Jager Gill and Jordan J yeah. Jusevich. Jusevich. Yeah, that's, that's, right. uh, <laughs> that's, that's pretty a, good to start. That is. All right, number and, one. Uh, I was wondering where this team was at on that poll, but they must be number one. Yeah, the they are. There's the a lot of there's a lot of orange and black love out there. Yes, uh, there in is. The preseason, is there? <laughs> yeah, there is. Well, I want to know who. Maybe Tommy can do this interview. Who are these dirt squirrels that they were talking about? They've got kids from five uh, five foot three to five foot ten as running backs hmm. and then their offensive line is like huge you know hmm. 270 yeah. 280 it's amazing great Call offensive dirt scheme and they uh they uh got new prairie of course tomorrow night oh, but they're back in 5a uh yeah. laporte which is huge for them yeah, as is. well you know it griffith is. got Six students got him up. The Laporte's back down, so it's yep. huge for them. Maybe they came to the group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they transferred. Yeah, I, it, it could have happened. All right. The how about five? the little five? Time for the five. I like uh, Winnemac, a strong program there. The Red Salier Bombers, I want in the mascot uh, part of our, you know, I want to see where the Bombers <laughs> Oh, you know from. the Bombers want to be in that. Uh, um, Knox, Knox Redskins had a very well, good year. Well, he had a nice year last year. There's North Newton, 8-3 and three last year, and then Whitey, all the way down to the semi-state. I'm looking right? for a Lake Station and River Forest maybe to be in this poll. Uh, River's got a solid team coming yeah, they back. Do. They do. Big game tomorrow against the Wheeler. Uh, Coach Hudak's opener for the Bearcats, so that's an interesting game to look at. Uh, Lake Station, I think, has 16 seniors yes, back. Yes, that's what I thought I read. Now, the school that Coach Hudak left to go to Wheeler, so uh, they'll be interesting to watch as well this year to see if they, uh, and, and, you know, that's something when you have a, a Lake Station and River Forest with some football expectations yes. for them to be yes. have good seasons, so we'll see how that goes. And, of course, Whiting, uh, semi-state last year, uh, state finals two years yep. ago. Yeah. So Whiting, you look at them to reload and have another solid, solid football team this year. All right. It is already that time, folks. We won't show you all the well, picks. I think we will this time. We are going to yeah. show them all just the picks time, just time. tonight? Yeah. Okay, then in the future, you got to go to that Facebook page, folks. Lakeshore at Prep Sports on the Facebook page. If you And we know over 2,000 of you have liked the Prep Football Report Facebook page, so if you haven't, go ahead and do that. But it's time now. He remembered the hat for the opening <laughs> night of Wayne's World. All right, let's start in the Doodland. I like uh, Merrillville over Andrean. Um, <clears throat> I just think that Merrillville uh, has a little bit more athleticism, but Andrean is going to be tough this year. I Ryan think so, and, and again, Merrillville's got the quarterback back. That's right. That's a big key. I like Hobart over Chesterton. Um, this, Hobart, is quite, uh, this is uh, this is what I think could go. I was. The check mark was looking closely at that game, but yeah. uh, that's one that can go either way. Yes, it could. Chester really struggled offensively last year. Uh, Hobart lost Nick Ray. Yes. Obviously, it's yes. a three-way starter there. That's right. <laughs> that's <laughs> you got to replace right. on all sides of the ball. So that's big. I agree. Now and remember, uh, let's look again. Let's. You got you like Lowell, but remember Crown Point beat Lowell in the opener last year. Yes, they did. But I think that uh, right now. Uh, Lowell is, is again, well, it does, you don't know how, what the quarterback situation is going to be, but um, 
Lowell's got some really good offensive players. Yes, they do. All right, elsewhere, you like Griffith. I do. I like Griffith at Michigan City. Now, this is going to be a big one. You know, and like you said, they're going to put some points on the board. Yeah, you were conservative there. I, I'm was. thinking 45 to 40, <laughs> oh, somewhere geez. in that realm tomorrow night. Uh, All right, I like uh, the Indians. Lake Central, they're on the road at Munster. Munster always gives them trouble. You know, I want to say kudos to Munster for keeping this national na natural rivalry. Yes, I agree. When In the era of schools changing their schedule and changing conferences, kudos to Munster. They haven't backed away from playing. I mean, LC Munster rivalry is tremendous. Yes, it is. It is. Yes, for the students, is. I totally for the schools, agree. It's, it's great. Uh, and kudos to Munster for keeping that uh, rivalry on the schedule. And elsewhere, you like elsewhere. Laporte. I do. I like uh, Laporte uh, over New Prairie, even though New Prairie has their quarterback, Nick Wilson, back. And you know how well he, he did last year. He didn't play last week, though, in uh, the scrimmage. Well, they're holding my Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were. Without a doubt, they were. Okay. Uh, um, let's see. Yeah, any... Any red check marks here to see yet? Maybe not. No, not okay, yet. Okay. okay. All right. So <laughs> we've got Penn in town for Valpo, and yeah, uh, you know yeah. that's a tough one. Even though Penn should be down this year, I guess they're never too. Penn down. has an all-world tight end who committed oh, to Iowa, oh. who left the school to go to one of those prep schools. And now he's come back. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. That, whatever. That's not fair. I think okay, is I like uh, Portage over Mishawaka. All right, I like yeah, that. Yeah, I like Portage. I think that uh, they're going to. Was that a late well. change? No. Uh, Portage. Oh, I'm sorry. I, no, no, I. You like oh, Mishawaka? That's right. <laughs> Couldn't see it. I thought it was 2834. Yeah. <laughs> no, you like <laughs> Mishawaka? Fault, yeah, <laughs> that was my fault. All right, I do. I do like Mishawaka. Yeah, they're good. But uh, Portage is going to give them that everything could go either way as well. Yeah. You like Highland? I I do. Uh, at this point, uh, I like uh, Highland over Morton. Highland thumped Morton last yes, year in that they opener. Did. Yes, they did. Uh, Just in case the Morton boys forgot, I was going to bring that up for them. <laughs> they got trounced in the opener last year. And I like the uh, Bombers uh, over KV. I and the Bombers were beaten yes, by they KV. Were. The, yes, they were last year in their opener. That's right. You, I like uh, in the Great Lakes. Uh, I like uh, Gavit. Me too. Uh, in a close one over Calumet. Uh, it's at Gavit, and I like uh, Hammond over South Bend, Washington, who really struggled last the year. Checkmark thought that could be an easy one to take South Bend, Washington, but mm -hmm. I am not picking against a region team in the, All right. the season. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, East Chicago, even though they kind of lost some players from last year. Um, I like them over Northwest like, just yeah, because they look I, don't, good. I don't know anything about Northwest. You like Whiting on Saturday? Oh, yeah. On, over Clark. Whiting is uh, going to be on a roll here. New coach for Boone Grove, Coach yeah. Kukulski. Right. And uh, I like uh, John Glenn, though, uh, over Boone Grove um, in the south, the greater south shore. You like I like Hanover? Hanover Central. Yep. And that's another team to keep an eye on. They were 10 and 1 last year. And do yep. they have that ability it's to come back, back. And, I, the, and do the same thing? I think thing? they will. I do too. Um, I like, like Wheeler. Uh, Wheeler. Over River Forest. That's going to be a close one tomorrow. Or, is that can't right? pick yep. against Coach Hudak in his yep, that's uh, right. right. That's right. I was thinking about it, just can't do it. Uh, I like the uh, satellites <laughs> over uh, Lake Station, just because we had a promo about that. Yeah. Um, now no, watch this I one. do. The, the, I know. I like Lake Station here at home. Oh, yeah? They're, they will not be intimidated by the uh, satellite mascot yeah. story. Although... <laughs> <laughs> South Central does have their quarterback back. Yes, they do. And he's a good one. And Lake Station's got a lot of players Yes. Back, so that'll be a great game. Um, I like uh, LaVille. Oh, no. You picked LaVille over I have to. They, okay. they were 10-2 last year. You got you um, like Judson? Over, and uh, I like uh, Judson over uh, Culver. And I really like uh, Casting over West Central only because um, okay. West Central was Three more left. left. Three more. All right. You like Knox. I do. I like uh, Knox over Winnemac. I like um, Washington over Bowman. Bowman in, is struggling with numbers right now. And the big one in Gary, yeah. I like you West like side. side over Roosevelt. Okay, I do too. All right, check mark tonight on opening night of the high school football season. I'll tell you who it is, Wayne. It's going to be... Program support uh, comes from Nipsco. No, it's going to be Honey. Michigan City. Who is this guy? 
Oh, that's Frank. Michigan hey, Frank. City, the check mark. Wayne over, <laughs> over Griffin. Griffin. Yeah, that's going to be a great game. That's yeah. going to be a great game. And Lake Station, Lake Station over South Central. Those All are the righty. two check marks tomorrow night. Good. Don't forget, listen on 89.1 FM for our Friday night show. For debuts tomorrow night. And then we'll be back here live at 1030 for PFR School Board tomorrow night. Good night. Program support comes from Nipsco. Honey, who is this guy? Oh, that's Frank. Hey, Frank. <laughs> Honey, why is Frank in our bedroom? He's showing us ways to save money. Plus, he'll even help us install LED bulbs and new shower heads. Oh, well, he is leaving before I shower, though, right? To schedule an energy assessment and learn more about energy usage, visit Nipsco.com. Frank, could you hand me a towel? For more information on everything prep football, visit us on Facebook or on Twitter at PFR Sports.